Rolex is the first thing that comes to mind when you think of a luxury watch. They're known for being very expensive. The selling price of a Rolex starts at around $5,000 to the most expensive wristwatch ever sold at $17.8 million. There is therefore no surprise that a Rolex is often associated with extreme levels of wealth and a very luxurious lifestyle. But is all of this just a marketing gimmick? The result of the luxury goods cartel? Or is there a reason these timepieces are so expensive? There are many brands of luxury watches that use similar construction materials for the casing and brands that have scratch-proof face coverings just like a Rolex, but at a fraction of the price. While you can certainly argue that a Rolex stands out in these categories as well, this video will try to explain the inner workings of a watch to appreciate the artisanal masterpiece each Rolex is. Part of the brand image of Rolex is that their watches are incredibly accurate at keeping time. But how accurate are they really? Let's start by looking at how we keep track of time. One of the simplest ways we can keep track of time is by using a pendulum. We can model the behavior of the system with a well-defined differential equation. It wouldn't be an engineering video without the small angle approximation. We can then calculate the period of the harmonic oscillator by taking the square root of the length of the pendulum cable over the gravitational acceleration. We want a pendulum oscillator with a period of 2 seconds. So we solve the distance from the pivot point to the center of mass. You will notice how the maximum angle does not influence the period. This means the period will be the same even if the maximum angle is reduced. There is also no influence of the mass on the period. This system should work really well. The pendulum would pass the zero line twice every period, so that is once every second. This allows you to get a tick every second to rotate a gear train. You can also easily adjust the length of the cable or change the center of mass of the weight to make small adjustments. This technique is widely used in big clock structures like the Big Ben or regular grandfather clocks. And there are many videos you can look at to learn how they work. So does this mean you can just slap a weight on the end of a 1 meter long cable and call it a day? Well, not quite. You can probably already start to imagine how none of this is useful for wristwatches, mobile phones, boats or spacecraft. A fundamentally different approach is needed for mobile timepieces. These days there are two main approaches for keeping time. Quartz clocks and mechanical or automatic chronometers. Most mass market watches make use of a quartz crystal to keep time. They usually have quartz written on the face of the watch or it is given under the movement specification. A piezoelectric crystal is manufactured to vibrate at exactly 32,768 Hz, which is above the earring threshold for humans, making acousticians happy, and it is 2 to the power of 15, which makes electronic engineers happy. These crystals work by applying a voltage to a piezoelectric material, which then vibrates at its resonant frequency. This is similar to heating a symbol with a drumstick, but at the same time not at all, but it can still give an intuitive feeling of what happens. You would just use an electric field instead of a drumstick to vibrate the crystal. I'll make another video explaining piezoelectric materials in more detail. This is exactly the same method used in computers to create a CPU clock, though a much higher frequency is often used for CPU clocks. I'm using a pitchfork to illustrate the principle. The crystal doesn't actually look like a pitchfork, but it resembles one. When you strike a pitchfork, it vibrates at its resonant frequency. Each oscillation is countered with electric circuitry. The signal is processed and used to either control an LCD display or to drive a stepper motor to indicate the time. 
sports clocks are also much more accurate than mechanical clocks. So Rolex is probably using these in their wristwatches, right? Well, no. Rolex watches are mechanical watches. All of them. The mechanism responsible for keeping time in a mechanical timepiece is known as a chronometer. These mechanical chronometers rotate a balance wheel on a spiral spring to give ticks to the escapement mechanism which is used to regulate the speed at which a gear train turns. So it's like a pendulum, but now you're using a spring to rotate a balance wheel instead of letting gravity do the work. By the way, as a rule of thumb, you can usually distinguish between a quartz and mechanical watch by listening to the sound it produces. Quartz clocks often only rotate the second hand every second, which creates a ticking sound every second. A mechanical watch on the other hand rotates the second hand six times every second, so there's a clear difference in the sound each watch would produce when you put your ear next to it. Again, for the nerds, you can calculate the period of the system by calculating the required stiffness of the spiral spring and the corresponding moment of inertia of the balance wheel. Every single one of the material properties and dimensions have a tolerance associated with them, and they are different for each material sample and for every manufactured part. The watches must be accurate enough to satisfy the conditions set in ISO 3159-2009. This standard gives the required mean and variation for the number of seconds lost or gained every day by a mechanical chronometer. To meet these standards, mechanical wristwatches must not lose 4 seconds or gain 6 seconds on average each day for 15 days of continuous operation. Furthermore, the standard deviation must be less than 2 seconds per day. This means that each second the mechanical watch produces must be 99.998% accurate. This equation is basically the main point of this video. And I'll repeat what I said earlier to make it as clear as possible. Even though quartz clocks have better control over the period, it takes some serious quality measures to get the same period accuracy for a mechanical watch. This equation shows just how precise high-end mechanical watches must be. The equation is what we call a first order or zeroth order analysis tool, just to get us in the ballpark of what the dimension should be. You would optimize these values in a finite element package in a real life scenario. Capital T is the period measured in seconds. 2 pi is from when we converted the angular velocity from radians per second to cycles per second. Then we have a square root. Inside the square root, we can divide the factors into two sections. The one section indicates the stiffness of the spiral spring, and the other indicates the mass moment of inertia of the balance wheel. We will now go through each factor to see how easy it is to control or adjust it. 12 is a constant. L is the length of the spiral spring. You can adjust this pretty easily. The mass moment of inertia of the balance wheel can be adjusted ever so slightly using small screws on the diameter of the wheel. In the denominator is where the difference between regular mechanical watches and high-end mechanical watches starts to become clear. E is the Young's modulus, a measure of the stiffness of the material. You don't have much control over this. B and T is the width and the thickness of the spiral spring, respectively. These spiral springs are tiny, so the width is usually a millimeter or less. And the thickness is even smaller than that. Now you can imagine how difficult it is to cut a strip of metal that is about a millimeter in width. But it's even more difficult to control the thickness of the spiral spring. And it has a huge impact on the period since it's raised to the third power. As I mentioned earlier, the period should be accurate to 99.998%. That means to achieve that accuracy, the thickness must be accurate to 99.99867%. That means the tolerance for a half a millimeter thick spring is 0.665 micrometers. To put that into perspective, 
that is 200 to 300 times smaller than the width of a human hair. This is why they use jewel stones as bearings and highly specialized lubricants on the hinges to get precise and predictable movements. They use ridiculously high quality metal alloys to have as much control over the material properties as they can and ultra high precision machinery is required to machine each part to meet the dimensional tolerances. Very stringent quality control is ridiculously expensive and difficult to perform. It takes years of research and development and it takes the skills of the best engineers and scientists on the planet. And that's not even mentioning that you need to create a brand image, make people aware of it and set a price point so that enough people buy your product to keep a steady cash flow but then you still need to maintain exclusivity so there's a balance that you need to find. And just one mistake in any of this could shatter your brand. I could go on and on, but the point is, the whole process of producing a luxury watch is ridiculously expensive, especially in the case of a Rolex. In my opinion, buying a Rolex is absolutely worth it if you're buying it to own a piece of art that is manufactured using the best modern engineering has to offer. But if you're just looking for a shiny thing to tell you what time it is, well, they're absolutely not worth it. Tell me what you think in the comments below.